Luke, uh, one of the ways I like to try to figure out what reality is is by asking a basic question of the of the things of existence. Uh, now we know, you know, chairs exist, uh, uh, flowers exist, uh, bugs exist, flies exist, uh, but that's not the question. The question is when you when you go down to the most fundamental categories of stuff, what is existence so that you couldn't reduce it below that and the, you couldn't explain one category by the other category. This is, yeah. the, this is the fundamental stuff that we, we have to work with. And we have to explain everything, everything that exists. Right. Uh, so you're, you're a cosmologist, you're, you're a believer. Uh, you know, give me the categories. Right, that's a small, nice small question. <laughs> uh, so starting with physical things, obviously I think physical things exist. There's an open question about what exactly physical things are, but uh, I think there, there's a point where there's, there's sort of the totality of physical existence. Whatever it is, there's some bottom level of these other things that exist. It, it, there, there, there are physical things that exist. For, for reasons of, of fine-tuning and, and the, the worldview I have, I think there's got to be more than just those. But let's just let's focus on that for a second. We right. say physical things exist, but, but w what is the most basic level of those oh, physical yeah. things? I mean, I want, I want in each category drill down okay. so I can understand the most fundamental thing that you can explain everything else in that category from. Okay. So, at the moment, it looks like we have space-time and we have quantum fields. Um, but the fact that those two, gravity and quantum mechanics, aren't quite talking to each other suggests that, that there's, there's probably a story underneath those that we just don't know yet. So this is one of the problems, one of the interesting things about, say, naturalism, if you think that, that or materialism, that, that everything is just matter, that we don't really know what, what matter is. We don't know what we're saying when we say that <laughs> matter is the only thing that exists. Uh, so there's something below that would generate the quantum fields, space-time, I mean, some physical explanation, some naturalistic explanation that would generate that. I think so, yeah. Uh, the fact that these two great theories don't quite talk to each other says we're okay. missing something. All right, so that's what we have on the physical side. Yeah. And, 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 you know, some people say that that's all there is. Right. But you go beyond that. Well, there's also there's another sort of realm that's interesting on, on sort of mathematical and abstract truths. And whether we should say that they exist or whether they are just true in some sense is is a, a very interesting question, uh, in particular because it's often framed in terms of is, is mathematics invented or discovered? It's a classic sort right. of question. And the, the, the real tug on that for a physicist is that it feels like it's discovered. Uh, but then... Which if it has it an independent existence yeah, other than our creativity. But then it would need to sort of exist in some sense. But then I don't have a category. That's not a physical thing that exists. It, it's... Uh, it's a something else. It's a not physical thing. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a category of existence that right. is not a physical one. Right. Some people think that's a fiction. That yeah. It's, it's nominalism is just it's just the result of, of linguistics in our mind. But that would seem to suggest the more it, it's invented rather than it's yeah, discovered. Yeah, yeah, but sure, it doesn't feel sure. like we're invented. Okay. All right. So as a physicist, you you'd come to where numbers and therefore all abstract, many abstract objects have a some kind of an independent existence, yeah. whatever that means. All right. So that's my. Uh, so I, I now have two categories. So well, possibly we can subsume for for me at least subsume that under the category of of God. If if there is a necessary being who has thoughts, they we might be able to sort of throw mathematics in under there. You have, you have necessary ideas in the mind of God Okay, so mathematics but, but, might but, wait, sort but, in but under the, there. What, what that would imply is that, it, hypothetically, if there were no God, there'd be no abstract objects. So that seems difficult to imagine. If you're, if you're giving abstract objects a, a, uh, um, a, a legitimate existence, you're doing it because you can't explain it, but now if you say it, it's a product of God, but if God you know, the thought experiment is no God, then you have to get rid of your abstract objects. It seems to right. be easier to get rid of God than get rid of <laughs> abstract objects. So there's two ways you could approach that. You could say uh, the thought experiment that there is no God, if God exists necessarily, then it's like saying the thought experiment oh, right. of two and two equals seven, right? That's one way around it. It seems okay. it may be a bit cheap. <laughs> the other way would be if, if, if there were no God, then it would turn out we were wrong about what we thought mathematical objects were and that they, they were actually something else. Because I, 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 I see the point of the thought experiment that if there was no God, it seems like two and two would still equal four. <laughs> so 
um, putting all of that together is very difficult for me as a cosmologist, but uh, I, I see, uh, at least within theism, there is a sort of coherent worldview here of I, I, can, I have somewhere to put mathematical objects where I don't have to imagine some separate category of existence. They seem okay. to be ideas, but necessary ideas. I can put them in a necessary mind. And now you have this category of God. Is there anything else? I mean, you know, the Abrahamic religions talk about other spiritual creatures, angels or demons or whatever else. Is that, a, is that another category? Or is there a heaven? I mean, you know, are these part of God? I mean, you know, if, you, if, if you're investing in your theism yeah. and, you, and we're talking about these fundamental categories, you've got to be honest. So I, I don't want to say this. I have a worldview in which those things could have a place. And then the question is, is there good evidence for those sorts of things? And uh, there's, you could expect evidence from the physical sciences or from, you know, the sort of combined um, uh, testimony of people throughout the ages, maybe represented in, 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 in certain books and those sorts of things. Uh, I, I don't find myself compelled to either sort of answer there. I, you know, I, I could believe in those things if there was evidence for them. There's, wor there's room in my worldview for those. But I, I don't particularly need to have any sort of strong opinion. But would they be would they be fundamental categories or would they be subclasses? I think they would be a separate category of existence. I think they would just be sort of something else. They would just be maybe you could think about them as a separate. You know, there's the physical realm and there's this other realm which would have you know its own laws, its own properties, yeah. and, and maybe able to interact. But you know that that's. That, I think, is how, say, you know, Aquinas thought of angels, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so that's a possibility that I, uh, I, I can imagine. I have room for it in my world if I need it, but <laughs> uh, uh, I, can, I can be agnostic about so, it. Physical law, abstract objects, maybe under God, God and this other potential spiritual realm. Possibly. That's your world. Yeah, those are, that, that pretty much sums it up, I think.